Hi there, if you've just joined us, don't forget to subscribe and press the like button and the notification to get the latest from us. Right now is Maninda Jit Singh, right here on the RSS with HD. Hi there, welcome to the show. As usual, it's myself, Rashid Saleh, and Harish Dill here to you. And we've got a really interesting guest uh, today. He is a former hockey international as well, now administrator and first time blogger, I hear. So let's welcome him to the show, Manina Singh, or, or fondly known as Mike. Thank you very much, Mike, for joining us. I, Harish has got quite a number, I wouldn't say controversial questions, but I hope you speak, you do, will speak your mind uh, because uh, we really need to hear, or rather the audience would want to hear what's going on in the world of hockey. So welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rashid. And uh, firstly, happy Father's Day to you and Harish. Thank you. Thank you very much. So yeah, um, the, as what Rashid pointed out earlier, we have today uh, Manindajit Singh, uh, former, ho former hockey international. He once served the Malaysian uh, Hockey uh, Confederation as an administrator. Uh, today, he serves as the biggest uh, critic. So, my first question to you, Mike. Um, you seem to be angry at a lot of things. Why? Uh, as you know, Harish, uh, at the moment, uh, I, I do not uh, hold any position or called in uh, to give any view. Uh, the only platform that is available for me to share my to be of thoughts and uh, experiences uh, through uh, social media and uh, I'm starting uh, like a newbie in uh, media social I know it, it's too late but anyway I'm trying my best uh, I started with Twitter and uh, now I got a blog which is only uh, one week old and uh, I think Harish I have to learn uh, a lot of things from you since <laughs> you are like, one of the founders uh, in this blogging world no no I, w I wouldn't call myself founders we've got a lot of people who will actually uh, uh, claim uh, that stake but anyway um, th thanks for raising um, Stick With Mike. So that's your um, blog name, yeah? Stick With Mike. Um, you know, why Why did you start Stick With Mike? Um, wouldn't it be easier to just, um, you know, rant and whine like what many people do on Twitter? Uh, the reason is uh, Twitter doesn't allow you to put a lot of words. Uh, might be uh, in a blog where it allows you to write a lot of new ideas. And uh, you can also give a third uh, eye on uh, every issue that uh, that is faced by mission sports. Now the thing is that it's clear that you want your views to be recorded in a way via your blog uh, to be read by those in charge. Uh, for sure, uh, if they take uh, might be uh, at least thirty percent of any pointers that I've raised, I think uh, that will help uh, a lot uh, in mission sports. But Mike, I, I know that you were a former international, a, a really good one. <laughs> um, you, you, you were part of the system as the general manager of the Malaysian Hockey Confederation. Now, um, th that was all in the past. Moving forward, why should the current leadership or even players listen to you? Why? Uh, the reason being is... Uh the experience that I had uh, for 15 years and uh, consistently playing at uh, big events like in World Cup and uh, Olympics. We have always been at World Cup and Olympic and we have uh, always reached uh, number eight and uh, we also got a silver medal at Commonwealth Games. That means it tells you that uh, the team and the management during that time have done uh, some very, very good things uh, that we have brought uh, success and uh, glory to the nation. Uh, that's the reason uh, might be uh, we have a different benchmark during that time and now currently we look at it is uh, things are not uh, as usual and uh, the team is uh, the performance wise if you look at it uh, we have never break into top 10 and even at the World Cup in uh, the last World Cup in 2018 out of 16 teams we finished 15 and uh, we are the one of the first team to go back home. 
Now, um, oh. very sorry. Let me uh, sorry, Karin. Do you, do you think um, on, on to the question that, that, that Harish asked? Do you think that the, our authorities don't value? I mean, we, we spoke to Ong Beng Hee earlier, and he had to go to Qatar to 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 be the director of coaching there because he wasn't valued here here in Malaysia. Do you think maybe in the long term that you will be more valued elsewhere, or you're going to keep fighting here? Uh, for sure, uh, my first option is always my beloved country, uh, Malaysia, because uh, I think. Uh, Mainly hockey has a uh, very good potential to be a world-class team. But only thing I believe that what the custodian is doing, uh, the policies and the key components of the federation is not at the optimum level to bring uh, hockey at a uh, world level. That's my argument. Uh, Mike, you rightfully pointed out that um, the results do not seem to favor us at this current particular period. Yeah? Um, unlike what you and your teammates achieved, um, you know, back in the day, um, in the late 90s, early 2000, and throughout the whole 2000. Now, can I blame you and your teams for the shortfalls in hockey simply because you were part of the system? But, you know, you, were, you, you just speak about yourself, you just speak about the, the achievements you and your teammates did during your era, but where was the follow through? Why weren't there a proper grooming system to ensure that the elders immediately when they left the scene, there would be somebody to take over that position and to actually elevate the spot to uh, another level to, 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 you know, the, the bar would be set higher instead of it, you know, being lower now. I mean, your thoughts, please. Uh, I agree with you, Harish. Uh, there is a mantra that we always follow in a sporting world, it says that uh, a successful uh, senior team is always dependent on the junior team. Uh, if you look at the talent pool of players that we had during my era and before me was plenty uh, that always uh, keep us on the toe as the senior players that there were always too many good junior players coming in. And then if you look at the record of the uh, Junior World Cup standing, uh, Junior Asia Cup, the results were there and uh, the talent was so big. Uh, but currently, if you look at it, is uh, the national team is only made of uh, maybe 16 players or 18 players. If you look at it for the last eight years, 90% in each tournament are the same players playing in every tournament. And one of them is actually S Kumar, correct? Because he keeps coming back uh, up until he he he, he you know uh, resigned from the sport, but he keep he kept coming back. Uh, the reason uh, you look at it is uh, a good team will always have. Uh, true uh, methodology, if you look at it, they call it the internal pressure. That means there's 20 players who are fighting for a spot. And then you have 20 players waiting outside this internal, call it external pressure. Like if you look at Kumar, uh, he's been there for maybe 18 to 20 years uh, taking care of the gold mark. Uh, the reason being is that insufficient uh, good talent out there. Why there is no proper investment? And we have been uh, engaging foreign goalkeeper consultants into this country. But why there was no a succession plan in goalkeeping? Now, Mike, I, 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 I need to just um, uh, stop you there because um, you say that we brought in consultants. Don't you think that we are too fixated with what happens at the top that we forget about the grassroots? I mean, look at grassroots hockey today. Um, that, I mean, you were involved, I remember, um, with Hartama School. You yeah. remember the good old days? Good old yes, days. Uh, by the way, where Maninderjit almost... Uh, <coughs> um, <laughs> let's not get into that, but anyway... I'd like to know what, what happened. Uh, he was just very angry with me, that's all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, but on a serious note, yeah, I mean, you were involved in, in, in during that particular era and uh, Mike, nothing has changed, yeah? <clears throat> in, in, in the sense that hockey is still played with limited, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, within a limited time. And if, let's say, for example, you're part of a losing team, you only play a maximum of three matches a year. That's it. Yeah. And uh, schools are being robbed of their fields. Uh, fields, public fields are being robbed in the name of development. And, uh, you know, you, you can't get a proper playing space to play hockey. So now, my question to you is that, or, or I would like to say this, aren't we too fixated at the top? Then we forget that we need to look at the grassroots. Your thoughts, please. Uh, as a custodian of the uh, in Malaysia, very simple. 
the constitution says indoor and outdoor you are a governing body so you are responsible but if you look at the structure there is three uh, structure in every pyramid of every sport the first thing is grassroots mm. after grassroots it goes to development after development it goes to high performance but the grassroots in this country is mainly uh, under ministry of education which is in schools there is a system in the sporting uh, school system created by the moe there is pld from pld it goes to state sports school from state sports school it goes to national sports school they are the one that supposed to be providing the talent to go to the next uh, stage which is called a development stage which is the age group national team and then these boys are the future to represent the country at high performance level whether it is a national junior or as a national senior team but if you look at the schools today they do not play enough sports even some school do not have an annual sports day mm. if you look at it is the reason very simple our time we used to train on during school holidays for next year example during the november and december the team trains for the coming year hockey activities and then we start the district level in two months it take two months to be a district champion just say you have eight school in uh, gomba district for example we will be playing 16 matches we'll be rotating to each school in these two months to be a district champion a district champion then we go to inter district and then we become a state champion and on top of that at the end of the year we have a national champion school the best school in every state comes and plays in this tournament so technically if you look at it we will play the sport minimum 6 months of hockey not including the 2 months of preparation during the school holidays in november and december that was the difference compared to today okay now it's easy for us to train our guns on the um, national body which is the malaysian hockey confederation but i've got a bone to pick with the state hockey associations um you know is their role merely just to elect somebody during the agm and that's it where's the development program where are the leagues you don't see much talk much you know hype about hockey at the states and i think um, once again it's unfair to just blame the uh, uh top when in fact the states who elect the top and who are part of the top are not effective your thoughts please i uh, actually uh, the national level and the state are interdependent then between yeah. each of them if you look at the constitution that is how it's been drafted uh during when i was the administrator uh, what i was we intended to do was to rate to come up with a rating system of each of the affiliates uh in terms of hockey we have 16 affiliates which was uh, 14 states and pdrm and uh, Mike, Mike, Mike. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Mike, rating system for states. Come on, lah. You know it will not work because you need the votes of the states during the election. Ah, uh, the reason, ah, uh, Harris, why we came up with the rating system is, ah, uh, uh, technically is to provide the funding and also monitor what are the activities happening to the state. And ah, uh, if you look at it, if if the state that has a state league and they are very active in the development program. Example, we started a one month ah uh, hockey program. so we need the states to be a very important stakeholder uh, to play the grassroots and the development other than ministry of education so we came up with a very good system a rating system which in every council uh, we will uh, elect maybe in first council meeting we will say the best uh, four stage team to brief to the council the progress of uh, hockey activity in their state in term of uh, state league uh, development program the standards of empiring the technical part and the financial and the quality of meetings that they have so in that way in the council meeting every state uh, will be well prepared and uh, they are aware out of 16 uh, when uh, the, we took office was maybe we only had five states that only had a state league but coming up with a rating system and providing funds and uh, valuing their contribution as part of the stakeholders suddenly we had about 11 to 12 uh, state already started having a state league so so i think sometimes we have to play a check and balance and also uh, put a pressure on them to perform but for is sure, it happening now uh, i'm not very sure haris uh, but i believe there might be only certain uh, states are still having uh, some state leagues 
only my issue is the state league should only play for one month which doesn't makes doesn't make sense a state league should be at least 3 to 4 months that's my view now i got i got a problem with this because you know hockey is obviously an olympic sport uh, um, hockey gets a lot of funding you're an you the, the association is an envy of federation of envy to a lot of associations sports associations you guys have the money but you guys have the you know all all the infrastructure but yet you can't get it together you you know the national team now struggles to get to to championships and all that you you have the you know the the uh, the, the the cup in in johor in Pera. But why is it that, you know, is it because ex-internationals or ex-players don't put their, their, their worth or value into, into the system anymore? Is it something that has just gone down? Who do you blame now? Uh, Rashid, if you look at the system, uh, if you look at the state, for sure how active is the state? And then you look at the component, I believe there's five key components in every uh, state or national level. First thing is competition. Second is the development program. Third is the state uh, hockey performance. Fourth is the empire and the technical aspect. And the fifth is the financial matters that in every state. Now the question is all these components, if you look at any state, you could not say any state has fulfilled these five key components. Everything is done on an ad hoc basis everything is done on a piecemeal, then it goes into a national level. If you look, for example, when was the last international coaching course held in this country? No, the rotation of the coaches are the same. You look at the national league, there is only limited eight teams, and then you only play 56 matches, and you finish in uh, six weeks, and then you look at the junior league, they limit the teams, and then you look at the performance of the national team, you are not getting there. You look at the women team, all of a sudden I hear in the news they say they want to qualify for 2028 uh, LA Olympics. How can they come up with such remark to say the women team will be qualified in 2028 Olympics? The first thing is we have to qualify for Junior World Cup for women. We have never played a Junior World Cup before. And now you're telling in six to eight years you'll be in Olympics? Unbelievable. Unless no, they no. Don't, don't, don't worry, Mike. We've also got plans of winning an Oscar, you know. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's anyway, not even go there. You, know, you, you speak about leagues, uh, for example. Uh, Mike, um, you, you wrote recently in your blog uh, about, you know, having GLCs, police, armed forces, banks. I mean, the prisons department used to play a huge role, you know, back in the day. Uh, even in football, for example. Uh, they should now participate in the domestic hockey leagues. That's what you wrote. And uh, that... Players will be offered jobs and contracts to sustain their future livelihood. That that was, by the way, uh, by Maninda Jit uh, in his uh, blog, uh, Stick With Mike. Uh, Stickwithmike.blogspot.com, correct, Mike? Yes, it's correct. Yeah, okay. So, what else can the stakeholders... You, look, you have just mentioned um, that the five components, you've written about uh, the participation of GLCs and, you know, the police and banks and the armed forces and the uniformed bodies. Um, what else should the stake holders do to move forward, to get this going, to get the ball rolling. There, there's no point just harping and, you know, saying that, yeah, the, we know the system is bad. We know everything is not right at the moment. So how do we move forward? Okay, to move forward, uh, I tried uh, when I was an administrator, uh, we call it uh, when you appoint a hoppish bearer through an election process, currently there's only two uh, process one is called nomination and one is election and the person gets a chair uh, for whatever term that is stipulated in the constitution. Uh, I presented a special paper to say that uh, to put in another process uh, before the election uh, which is called a wetting process. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to be a president of the state or you want to be a president of a national body, these are the minimum criteria that is required. Uh, for example, if you're a, you want to be a president of nation hockey, at least you should have played a minimum hockey level for state, maybe five years, or you have served the affiliates for 10 years, and then uh, maybe you have brought some uh, financial uh, value to hockey at certain amount. So by putting a vetting process, then I think you get a quality, uh, better hockey bearers uh, with a technical hockey knowledge. Uh, currently, uh, we get hockey bearers who are uh, uh, politicians who are famous, 
But if you look at the technical knowledge of the sport, it's very, very limited. Uh, that is uh, uh, something that always keeps me afraid because they are making the decision uh, or policy which has a direct or indirect impact on the growth of the sport. That is very dangerous. That is what I'm always concerned about and that is where we are not getting the results. But Mike, Mike, not all players make good administrators. You've got to admit that. Yeah. Uh, I agree, uh, I agree, but uh, the question here is uh, at least you will shape certain matters in the Federation on the technical aspect, especially uh, preparing a development uh, plan or maybe uh, you're coming out with a paper for high performance and then you're getting the support team from ISN, which is something that uh, you can always play a check and balance if you, are, you have been a player before and have gone through the system. So that will give you a better uh, decision making. But if you only an administrator or you go for a management course and then we give you a sports to handle, I think uh, the technical aspect is very, very important uh, to create the sports to be a very successful thing. Okay, here's a okay, true well, story. I, there, before, right? before you go there, I, know we're, I think we've passed the 21, 20 minutes. But okay. uh, uh, Mike, I'm, 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 I'm the president of MMA in Malaysia. I don't do MMA, I'm a rugby player. But I've been administrating the sport for a year plus. I, I have known MMA for about six, seven years, but I have no technical. Inter I mean, I do know that the technical, but I've not, never been in a cage. But I do run it, and I think so far we're doing okay. Uh, again, we've got guys who've been in, the, in, in MMA for a long time. I'm sorry, but I, I cannot. Not, it's not a matter of trust, but it's very hard to get a, a proper someone from, from the sport to be able to do it. Very few people can do it. People like you, yes. Uh, but people from other sports, not everyone can do it, unfortunately. But anyway, moving forward, Harish. No, sorry, uh, Mike, I just wanted to um, tell you something that I've just learned a couple of days back, whereby I've been informed that a particular president of a particular state association, I uh, won't mention a sport, nor the name, um, uh, you know, and this was revealed to me by someone who sits in the council. He said that the whole notion and interest of that particular individual in becoming president was simply of the glamour and he has got nothing, no interest in the sport. And his concept was to delegate the technical matters to the former internationals who are serving the board. Now, that has been dropped by this particular president who seems to be very involved in the day-to-day -day operation. Um, so you don't see, you, you now see a president who, like you pointed out, with zero knowledge in the sport, micromanaging an administration of a sport, which he knows nothing about. Um, don't you think that it's time where administrators are held accountable? Because when a hockey player does badly, he's dropped. When a coach says something or, or goes against what the administration wants, he's crucified. But when a hockey administrator, or even any sport for the particular, um, loses money, fails to develop the sport, the only thing they get is just booted out in the next elections, and that's about it. They sleep soundly at night. Your thoughts, please. Uh, if you look at uh, my situation, uh, I had two programs when I was uh, Secretary General of Nation Hockey Confederation. Uh, one was the Project 2013. My aim was this team to play in the finals of the Junior World Cup. Uh, we only finished fourth in the Junior World Cup in New Delhi. And I won uh, the national team to qualify for London Olympics in 2012. And uh, we did not even play in a playoff match in Dublin. Uh, so that, uh, that's the reason why I make a decision that I should be accountable uh, for failing to get to, to London Olympics. And uh, that is why I put my resignation letter to the president. And I say that uh, I have to be accountable. And I failed to take the team to London Olympics and I quit. That's simple. And the second question, uh, Harris, is uh, what I intend to do. I always share this information with a lot of my friends. Is uh, If you have not gone to the moon, but you are given a job uh, to be a chairman, a mission to moon. So technically, the person who becomes the chairman of the mission to moon, but he has not gone to the moon, he will only use two important information. One is called hope and one is called assumption. So this guy will be keep trying and trying and trying. And he's learning during his chairmanship, uh, but by then, the sport is not going anywhere. But if you ask the people or the players or former international who have gone to the moon not once, 
and they have gone maybe three or four times. If you tell them how to get to the moon, there is only a one way where you will get to the moon. But these are the things that the Federation or the office bearers do not want to hear or want to listen from the former international about how to get to the moon. This is where we are failing and failing. For example, they have since 2015, they have been using eight foreign consultants. I do not know where we are getting. We have got Neil Hogwood, David Bell coming, Terry Walsh, Paul Lisset, Michael McCann. We got uh, the goalkeeper coach, Martin. We got Take Takema, Flicker, and now we got Roland Since 2015, eight consultants. Where are we getting? We can't even get to Olympics after 20 years. You look at all the components. Oh God, where are we heading? Mike, Mike, last question. Yes or no, administrators should be put on the chopping block if they fail. Yes or no? Totally agree. They must be accountable because once you be willing to take the position, that means you are there to achieve success. Okay, it's a yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I I know we could literally do because everything is just really really warming up unfortunately uh, that's all the time we have but you know there's something you can think about uh, about writing in, in your next uh, blog because we've given you a few ideas as well and you're correct in saying even though and I, I and I was waiting for you to say it even though I know nothing about uh, MMA but I, actually I do the last seven years I have people who know who have been in the cage who are my administrators and we at the end of the day, somebody has to make a decision, somebody has to lead. But I'm, I surround myself with people who, who, know, who know the sport. And that, to me, helps because it's the only way forward. Uh, and yes, we learn a lot from uh, uh, sports like you guys in terms of uh, grassroots and development is something that we are taking on board and learning very much. And watching you guys in, and your fights and how to move ourselves forward. Because you know what? A whole history of uh, rugby, hockey, uh, football... I just look at it and go, that's what I'm learning from. So I'm actually learning from you guys uh, in terms of how we move forward as a young sport. And we don't want to have the same mistakes. So at least if we do, we, we learn quickly from, from what, where, where you, you are. Because we as a sport also want to get into the Olympics uh, one day as well. Even though, we, you know, that's, that's another story. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. But I do wish, I mean, I've, I've been a massive fan of hockey. And they always, you know... It really irks me that we have talent and yet, you know, again, that's a, like I said, that's another story. But thank you very much, Mike, for, for joining us. It's been really, really good. Uh, I know you were, you were just warming up, but I'm sure we're going to have you on again uh, as a guest the next time because uh, there will be other issues coming up. I'm very, very sure of that. But uh, on behalf of the RSS with HG, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Do you have any last words? Follow my blog. <laughs> Tell us what it is again. I'm going to write about how the woman is going to qualify for 2028 LA Olympics. Unbelievable. <laughs> and the blogspot name is? Uh, stickwithmike.blogspot.com all right. Okay. There you go. So don't forget to follow, follow him. Also, for those of you out there, uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe and like to our thing. Thank you very much to also to our sponsor, apparel sponsor, Amnig, uh, for being with us all this time. Uh, from Harish and myself, and also from Mike, thank you very much, and see you again next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.